I've explained this for every other class, but I haven't created a video on it. So this is just a general overview that I need you guys to understand, all right? So I'm gonna be talking a lot. It's gonna take about five minutes for me to explain this. But these two should be in your outline. That's why I've been like so adamant about, hey guys, make sure you have this outline. And please memorize these two properties, all right? Just like multiplying, just like your uh, you know multiplication tables, these your multiplication tables are very helpful because when you're doing later math skills, it's like oh eight times seven, uh uh uh, uh you know was eight times seven? Yes, it's fifty six. So what you can do is that it's helpful to know that stuff really quickly. For these properties of logarithms, it's very helpful for you guys to do these to be able to solve our logarithmic equations. So if you guys can understand these and get and know them down pat. They're going to be very helpful for you. All right, so let's first talk about this one because I think this one's the easiest to understand. Um, x go with actually an easier answer. Let's say I have x plus 1 equals 5 plus 1. So let's not eat and make noise because a lot of people don't eat their breakfast. Especially on the videos. Too. Yeah. All right, so if I look at this, if I say x plus 1 is equal to 5 plus 1, all right, knowing just what you guys know right now, the only possibility for x to be is, there's only one number x can be, right? x has to be 5, five right? Very good. That's fairly simple. You guys understand that, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go over a little bit harder. Let's say I have 4 squared <laughs> equals 4 to the x power. Again, just what you guys have learned so far in your mathematical minds, what is my only possible answer that x has to be? 2. 2, right? That, it makes sense, doesn't it? So what I can say then is I can generalize, and actually that's what the 101 property states, is whenever you have a number that the base is raised to a number, and you have that same base is raised to something else, what you can say is these two numbers have to be equal to each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So. The same thing is true for this. Let's say I just give you a random answer. I say 7 is equal to x, right? Well, if I say 7 is equal to x, I can say this as well. 99 to the 7th is equal to 99 to the x, right? What I can do is I can artificially put the, my 7 is the x as exponents, right? Because what I did is, and you say, why would you do that? I'll explain why I would do this later. But if you guys look at this, if I take um, 4 raised to the second power equals 4 raised to x, what I can do is I can cancel these out, and I get 2 is equal to x. Does everybody see that? Because you can pretty much like cancel out the 4s. Well, the same thing. If I have, let's just say 7 raised to the x, or 7 is equal to x, I can raise that. I can say 99 to the 7th is equal to 99 to the x. Now I know you guys don't know what 99 to the seventh is. That's why I chose it. But you can say that though that seven has to equal x, right? That's still true. I didn't change really the number. What if I did um, three raised to the seventh equals three raised to the x? Again, this is still a true statement, right? Because my bases are the same. Well, you guys like still wondering like why I'm doing this? It's SAT. Okay. Um, let me think of it even, uh, maybe 99 would have been maybe the best example. So you guys understand this though. Right? You guys understand that? Yeah. Let's just use an easy answer. Let's use <coughs> 3 is equal to x. You guys know that 1 cubed is equal to 1 to the x. x still has to equal 3, right? Or you could say 2 cubed equals 2 to the x. Well, therefore, again, 3 has to equal, or x has to equal 3, right? So I'm not changing the problem. All I'm doing is I'm rewriting it in a different format, okay? So why can we use this? How can we use this? Well, the way that we want to use this is let's say I have a problem. And I'll just use a general problem. Let's say I have... Um, 3 raised to the x power equals, and I'll just pick some easy numbers here, 27. All right? And if I just wanted to write this as, you know, how can I use my one-to-one -one properties to solve this problem? Now, I know you guys can do this in your head, 
I can say three raised to what number gives you 27? <clears throat> three, right? However, by using one-on-one -on -one properties, what I want you to see is we could also solve this problem by doing this, right? Because three cubed is equal to 27. Does everybody see how I rewrote that? Yeah. So you need to understand because what you're gonna do is I'm gonna give you some harder problems that you're gonna have to solve for, so you have to change this. So then, now since these both have the same base, you can cancel them out and you get x equals three. Does that kind of make sense what I did? Yes. So, like, in all bases it makes sense. You're just trying to get the same base. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, and I want to look at a, uh, a problem here that I had. Oh, sorry. You guys can use sorry, that. Logan. Yep. Why would you go through all those steps when you can just see in the first thing that x equals 3? It's going to be harder later. Okay. I already have videos on there, so I'm not going to explain. I just want you guys to understand how you have these two bases. All right. Um, here, here's an example. Let's let's give, let me give you a problem where it's not so easy. Three is to the um, hello. Hi. How are you? Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. Just give me one second here. Okay. okay. So you have three raised to the x minus four. Um, equal to, let's see, this problem is 27. Okay? Yes? 3, you said the base 3, 2, and 3, and then you said x <coughs> minus 4 equal 3, and then you solve, and then x is going to be equal to. Right, exactly. So what I can do is, I just want you to understand is, I can rewrite this, and like I said, we're going to go over more problems on different videos. But what you can say is, if I have this as, see what we have is we have my x is my, is my x point, right? So I need to get rid of that. So if I write this as 3 raised to the x minus 4 equals 3 cubed, okay? Then what happens is I can cancel these out, and I'll get x minus 4, I don't need to write parentheses, equals 3. And you just see why, the reason why this is important, the reason why I'm trying to show you this is why it's so important is, since we have these both to the as the bases, you can cancel them out, and you're left with x minus four equals three. So you get you get the x's off of your as your x points, and now they're as linear terms, so you can solve them. Yes. I don't understand why it can't be like three to the second. I'm not. You just need to understand that. Whenever you have a number, like nine, you can rewrite that as three squared, right? Yeah. So that's all I'm doing. The reason why I'm rewriting it is because whenever you have the same base on the left side and the right side, you can cancel them out. Because, oh. you know what I'm saying? So you always want to make sure you rewrite them as the same base. So I just rewrote 27 as the base three of three, okay? When I cancel that, then I can just finish solving this problem, s equals seven. Now, real quick, it's the same type of thing I, um, let me forget. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on. I wanted to, uh, they're not going to make sense to you guys, inverse properties. But we're going to use this more common. I just want you guys to understand exactly what you can do for one-to-one. -one. That's the basis of it. Okay? Sorry. I said